You're listening to Storage Nerds Podcast, where we unravel the best kept secret of the real estate investing world, the storage industry. Join the grassroots guru in self-storage, Stacy Rossetti, in insightful discussions about finding, funding, and running these spaces, allowing you to yield the highest returns possible. Get your foot in the door on self-storage and discover how to properly purchase facilities, negotiate with sellers, and close the deal without worries. Start unpacking that investment wisdom with Stacy right now. So we have a lot of people from a lot of different places hopping on. So I just want to say hi to everybody and thank you for coming to spend the, uh, the afternoon with me or evening, whatever time it is for everybody. We have people from REI USA coming on. So um, if you guys, if you're interested in learning how to invest in real estate, please check out REI USA. That's one of the companies that I own. And it's a platform where uh, like uh, expert coaches uh, outside, uh, I mean, expert coaches across the United States teach people how to invest in real estate, not only self-storage. I'm one of the coaches for, uh, for REI USA, but you can learn all different types of real estate investing transactions through REI USA. So thank you for all the members for hopping on and coming and hanging out with me. If you're a member of REI USA, let me know in the chat so I know you're here. And then also we have all of my storage nerd students uh, coming and hanging out. So storage nerd is the coaching program. And um, so that's where I, we, I, I coach and hold people's hands and teach people how to um, invest in um, self-storage. So if you are a storage nerd student, let, let me know, let everybody know that you're a storage nerd uh, student. The doors to storage nerds only um, open uh, three times a year. That's it. In January, May, and September. So we do have the doors opening on May 1st. If anybody's interested in getting to the coaching program, go to storagenerds.com. You could check it out. And then let's see, good, HJ's here. She's a storage nerd. I saw Yukiko. She's, Yukiko is also a teacher for REI USA. Yukiko is one of our coaches. She teaches small apartments. And so uh, she's here hanging out from REI USA as well. So thank you for hanging out with us, Yukiko. And then she does, she does, she, I know she wants to get into the storage as well, which is cool. Also this session gets, becomes the podcast for storage nerds. So there is the storage nerds podcast. So for any reason that you miss any of the sessions on Monday, the Monday night sessions, and you can always listen to the podcast if you want, or you can, you know, go to YouTube, just search Stacy Rossetti teaches. And that's the YouTube page. That's my YouTube page where we teach as well. The podcast gets put on out as a podcast and on YouTube as well. Okay. Make sure that you join the uh, Facebook group. It's called super simple self storage. If you are not a part of that group join, and then you can ask any questions that you have. All right. You know, if you have questions about how, you know, how to get started or how to look or like management, you know, questions or anything like that. A lot of people are posting out kind of, you know, questions in this group. And if you're looking for deals and stuff like this, also join that group because people are posting out deals that they're selling. So it's a very good, a very good group to be a part of. And then also, if you want to get started in self-storage, but you don't think that you can afford the coaching program, then you can always buy my course. My course is called Super Simple Self-Storage. So you can go to stacyrosetti.com and you can click on the course and you can buy the course. You could just do the course. That's like a DIY. That's like do it yourself, learn yourself kind of a thing is what it is. Okay. So I see a whole bunch of people here. So everybody's saying hi. So thank you so much. Let me see if I can do some shout outs here. We've got some North Carolina people. We've got, let's see. Let me see. We've got Larry from North Carolina, Angie from Minnesota. We've got Rhett from California. We've got um, Paul from California. Happy birthday to Lillian. Thank you. And um, uh, we've got, who else? Lynn from Wichita. We've got Azim here. Azim is, uh, Azim is here. He's one of the students. Uh, and then we've got Moline, Illinois. Lynn, I'm guessing is a city, right? So, and that is William. We've got Ari from, or Ari Eisenberg. No, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay. She's got deals and matches people with deals and money, I guess. Something like this. Awesome. Cool. Yukiko's here. And we've got another. Gaddy is here. 
and um, we got lots of links from Ariel in. So if you need the link, you can contact your Ariel in. And our email is questions at stacyrosetti.com. Okay, so if you have any questions or you think that Ariel can can always find you and tell you where to find everything that we offer. And Eric is in Houston. Awesome. Let's see. We've got, um, let me see here. We've got Rochelle from Arlington. Cool. We've got Reshima from Georgia. Rashima, I think Rashima sounds better than Rashima. Rashima, and then we've got also Jordan. Jordan from Minneapolis. It doesn't say the name for some reason. So Aaron for, from Seattle. We've got a couple of Seattle people here. Cool. We've got a lot of good people. So everybody's saying hi. We've got Michigan. We've got New Hampshire. Uh, okay, so lots of people here. Jim's from New Hampshire and then who else is from Michigan I like just seeing like where everybody's from it's just interesting you know Bruce is from Michigan I talked to somebody the other day like they wanted to be a private lender and they live in France isn't that cool isn't that so weird so yeah so I have the uh the self-storage fund of America right so you can go to and actually Ariel can post the link it's self-storagefundofamerica.com if you're interested in investing in self if you're one of these people that's like I got some money but I don't have any time. How can I invest in self-storage? The fund is perfect for you. The fund is where you need to be, all right? So uh, make sure that you check out Self Storage Fund of America. And then also uh, just at, email us at questions at stacyrosetti.com or questions at selfstoragefundofamerica.com if you are interested in that as well, okay? And typically I pitch that on Monday nights. We are not pitching that tonight. It's Lillian's birthday, so I'm gonna take the night off. But starting next Monday, I'll be pitching that as well. Right after this session, I talk about the fund and the deals in the fund and this kind of stuff. So you can ask me questions then, okay? And all that is found at stacyrosetti.com. So if you have any questions about anything, I would go to my website and look around on that. And then if you have any questions, you can always email us. Okay, good. Anyways, okay, good. Okay, who's new here? Eric is new, has no idea. Anybody else new? Anybody else own a storage facility? Okay, let's see who's this. Somebody owns a storage facility. Who's that? Tim? Oh yeah, Tim. Tim's a student. Tim owns a storage facility. Good. Uh, Tim, tell me, did you raise your rents? I would love to know. Did you raise your rents? Okay. So um, tell me about that in the chat or well, and then also set an appointment with me. I would love to hear about like what's going on with them. Um, I do all my coaching calls on Monday afternoons. So all my students, whenever they, you know, whenever they need help, or whatever, they can cut, they can do a coaching call, or you can just, you know, set, you know, just chat with me and let me know what's going on and stuff. I always love knowing like what's happening with everybody. Okay. So we have, um, this is good. We got a lot of people here today. Uh, Angie has a 39 unit self-storage facility that she bought July of last year. And she's looking to purchase her second. Perfect. Okay, good. Where did you buy that? I would love to know. And a lot of people say, like, if you get into the industry and start really learning about how to invest in self-storage, you are going to hear that you should not be buying smaller facilities. All right. Typically, most storage facility owners are going to say that you have to buy a facility that's like 50,000 square foot or bigger, right? But the truth of the matter is, and I say this all the time, is like not all of us can get out there and buy 50,000 square feet of building, right? And we started out, our very first facility was about 125 units. And we typically stick around 100, 100 units, but we do have a couple that are like, I think one was like 50, like our smallest, I think it's like 59 units. And it's in a little tiny town in a little, in a town called Warm Springs, Georgia. And um, I bought that thing for a hundred grand. And it was, uh, it was, it was a, it was a wife that inherited that property and uh, her husband died and she inherited it. And then she just like ran it to the ground really. And then, so she just wanted to dump it. And so uh, I offered, I offered a hundred grand. It was I think, a good fair price for both of us. And um, it took a good, like, it took a good maybe year to get that thing leased up, you know, cause it's a smaller town and, you know, it just takes a little bit longer for these types. But that thing's been rocking and rolling now for a while for the last couple of years. And it's probably worth, I mean, it's probably worth like 300 grand, honestly. I mean, it's full. It's, I mean, it's completely full. And actually the truth is, is like nowadays, you know, I don't know what anything is worth anymore because you can run your numbers at like an eight cap. You can run them at, at a, in a tertiary market. I typically was running my numbers at like an eight cap. 
And, uh, but nowadays people are buying stuff at crazy cap rates, right? I had one of like a, 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 like a realtor from uh, Marcus and Millichap. He messed, he called me up and he was like, do you want to sell your facility? I'm talking about one of them that we have in the North Georgia mountains. And I was like, no, I don't want to sell my facility. He's like, are you sure? Because we're, we're, we're selling facilities at four caps right now in that area that you're in. And I was like, four cap? Holy moly, maybe I should sell this thing. I bought that thing at like, well, I bought it as an abandoned facility. So it was a zero cap. Well, we're probably running that thing at like a 16% cap rate. Could you imagine like getting that thing all the way up to like 15, 16% and selling it for 4%? That's the thing, I mean, you know, and it's a 76 unit facility, you know, so um, people are just, you know, if I was gonna list my property to sell, I would, I'm definitely going to list it on the like Crexy or, or list, list it with a realtor. I would say, I'm gonna say definitely, but I would say most likely because you just get so much, I mean, prices are so high. I saw like, I saw a facility I can't remember if it was a Georgia or Florida because I'm typically Georgia, Florida or Texas when I'm looking for properties. I, it was either Georgia or Florida. And I saw like a tertiary market facility listed for like $20,000 a door. And I was just like, what? So today what I wanted to talk about was how you get, how you get started in self-storage investing. I saw that there's a lot of newbies here, a lot of people really interested. So today I figured what we would do is we do find them, fund them, run them. I just want to help people to get an overall view of how the market works, how the industry is working, and then hopefully give you guys your like next steps. And so if you're here and you have no idea on like how to get started, I'm going to help you to get out there and start looking for facilities. And then also, um, if you don't, if you're like, if you're looking already looking for facilities and you found a couple, but you don't know like how to get the money for them, I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. And then if you own a couple of facilities, like I know a couple of you guys do, then we'll talk about like managing them and like maybe just I'll give you some tips on kind of what we do. All right. So that's basically was my goal for today was just find them, fund them, run them. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's do find them, fund them, run them. That is how I teach. That is how I set my entire company up. Honestly, that's how we set Miss Lillian's up. So I own Miss Lillian Self Storage. You guys can check us out if you want. You want to check me out and see what I own. Go to MissLillian's.com. In terms of the website, right under the uh, the run them part, okay. We actually we actually hired somebody to build this website for us. So in the beginning we went through like a property management company and had the proper and just utilized the property management company's website most not not property management property sorry the property management software so most of the property management software is out there that you would use for like a like to manage your storage facility they also offer the website to come with it but what happens is like cuz we own 11 storage facilities what happens is they charge for every single facility that you own they charge like for you to have the website like it's like it's like a whole thing right so typically like software is going to cost you let's say like 75 dollars a month right and then the website also costs 75 dollars a month per facility right so we started like getting all these like facilities and then we're paying like 150 dollars a month and we actually are grandfathered into our software at um, like at the, the, the cheapest rate. Cause when I joined store edge, uh, there was only three people working like for um, store edge. Like I got grant, I was like not one of the beginning, the first ones, but like I was in the very beginning like years of store edge. So I just got, we got, we got Godfather, we got, not Godfather, grandfathered into the, to the lowest rate. And so now like, you know, if you, so now we basically, what we did is we went out and hired somebody and actually it's, it's our coach. His name is Guy and he's our marketing coach for storage nerds. And he builds the website for you. And then you can just eliminate that, that $75 or hundred dollars, whatever they charge you per month for each of the facilities. So we still pay the management fee to manage the facility to for the software to manage the facility 
but we don't pay that website fee, right? And so we saved a lot of money by doing that. Now the website probably cost us, let's say maybe a thousand dollars to build, right? But in the end, now we have like, we've saved so much money. So we save like a thousand dollars a month. I mean, we save like a ridiculous amount of money every single month just by building this out. So just keep that in mind when you're looking for software. And this is one of the questions that you should really be asking the software companies when you talk to them. It's like, okay, so how much is this going to cost me when I have five facilities or 10 facilities, right? Do you cut like a, you know, do you cut me a, a you know, cut me a cost out? Or are you, am I going to still add, like keep adding and adding this up per facility? And just see if there's like a, a way around it. But typically what I've noticed, all the major ones, and I've done a lot of demos on all, pretty much every software out there, we're doing demos. And they're charging uh, like for the management software and then also for the, um, for the uh, website software, for the website part too. So I just feel like you wanna, that's one of the questions, one of the things that you should be thinking about. And actually we didn't think about this until like it was too late, you know, until we had like 10 facilities, you know? So now like I'm telling you guys, think about that. If you're the type of person that wants to own like five or 10 or 15 facilities, because we're probably gonna own, like I'm guessing, I don't know, anywhere from like probably 20 facilities, 20 to 30 facilities. It's like in the long run, what's the best fit gonna be for us? You only wanna own one or two or three. It's not that big of a deal, but that stuff adds up. Now, especially if you're gonna be like this person that I saw here that has this 39 unit facility, we have a student that um, <clears throat> just did a, like a student showcase. So we meet for, uh, for storage nerds, we meet on the first and third Tuesdays of every month. And we do it kind of during lunchtime. And, and then on during that mastermind session, those are the mastermind sessions. We always have like a student coming on and doing what we call student, so, sh student showcase. And the last student showcase that we had this guy, Matt, he bought his very first facility he bought was also 39 units. And he did not do the property management software. And he did not, he did not do the website. So he basically was like old school, wanted to save as much money as he possibly could. He does all, he does all um, automatic payments, but he, he does that through PayPal. And he just takes the money out uh, every single month. And then I think eventually he set up like a credit card company maybe to just to, to withdraw the money. But um, so he just really was like, when you have these smaller facilities, like these 39 units or 59 unit you know, facilities, like you just have to take into consideration that it's going to cost you a couple hundred dollars. I think it's up now to like around $300 a month for the software and the website, you know, and $300 a month on a facility is like, that's a lot of money, right? That starts adding up, right? My students are paying typically like two, for a website and the software, I would say two to $300 a month, all right? All right, so anyways, you can check us out at Miss Lillian's and, um, and then, you know, you could just look at our website to see how you could actually do it. We just had, we just had that made is what we did. Okay, and then we're gonna do find them. And I have a lot of like free content out in the world on how to find storage facilities. Okay. And I talk this all the time. So this is not something I'm going to go into for more than just a couple of minutes because you can always search, you know, Stacy Rossetti uh, teaches and it will come up with a plethora of videos on this because I did a lot. I've done a lot of videos on finding them. But since there's a lot of newbies here, I just want to give you guys some ideas on how we find our facilities. We are we find our facilities now. I do driving for store. Personally, I found all my all the first six facilities. I would say no, the first to actually the first six six to eight facilities we, we found by driving for storage. Okay. All right. So hashtag driving for storage is my hashtag I created. And, and so, uh, yeah, so we basically go on Google Maps. And by the way, while I'm thinking about it, I don't know if anybody else got this, but I got an email today from Google stating that they are getting rid of the Google My Business app. Okay, so typically, like, in order for you to get onto Google Maps, you as the owner have to go, you had to go into Google My Business 
And uh, then you had to, you have to fill out like a whole, like you fill out the profile and add your facility, right? And it's a whole process. I'm not going to get into it, but it's a whole process to get your facility onto Google Maps. Okay. And Google My Business app is like the app. I guess they're going to, you can still go desktop and go do Google My Business, but the app, they're getting rid of the app. And then they're going to, what they said is they're going to do, they're going to do, what they're going to do is make Google Maps also Google My Business. So when you get into Google Maps, you can just log directly into your Google My Business uh, area whatever, it's not gonna be app anymore, but the Google My Business. And then you can start, you can edit everything through your phone. You can go, so you know how you go like into um, Facebook and you can edit like your profile and stuff like right there. It's gonna be just like that for the Google, for, uh, for Google Maps. You'll be able to pull up your company. I'll pull up Missile and Self Storage. And then right on my phone, I can edit like all my stuff right then and there. So instead of having to go into the app, they're getting rid of that. So I just, I got an email from that. And I don't know if anybody else did, but I got an email for that. And uh, so I thought that was pretty interesting, but essentially what I'm trying to say is that you as a business owner should be on Google Maps, but guess what? A lot of storage facilities are not on Google Maps. All right. So, um, so you, you want to Matt, you want to look, you want to basically go on to your app and you want to search like storage, you know, storage facilities near me or in the areas that you're interested in purchasing in. And, and then you can create like a, um, you can create like a list of storage facilities in the areas that you want. And I would just take out like, you know, take out the ones that you don't want to buy, like, unless you have like a lot of money, but you know, typically you don't want to buy like, you know, the big box office ones, or you don't want to buy anything that are owned by REITs or funds or anything like that, right? So you would take all those out and you would just create your own list. So we have an acquisitions team. And I've talked about this a couple of times. So essentially internally, we have an acquisitions team and that acquisitions team is really just going onto Google Maps and building lists for us and then calling those owners, right? To see if they want to sell, okay? So our acquisitions team does this. You can create your own acquisitions team to do this if you want to do that, or you can just do it yourself. Essentially, they're just going on Google Maps and then like literally creating the list themselves. And then any ones that they see that are like two stars or something like this, like we already know that those are like ones that we should be really trying to focus on, you know, anything like, and that's another thing is like Google Maps just gives you so much information, right? So you just want to make sure you utilize that. So anyways, our acquisitions team is really building lists by just going onto Google Maps, you know, looking on Google Earth, you know, and doing this kind of thing, and then calling the owners, right? Now, another thing that I wanted to mention is that as of May 1st, you can hire my acquisitions team if you want to find a property for you. Now, you have to be a student of storage nerds, all right? But um, if you're interested in just having somebody look for facilities for you, and you know, you tell them exactly where you want to find the facility. I would like to find, I would like to buy a facility in like, you know, on the uh, outskirts of like in the, in the suburbs or the tertiary market of Nashville, right? And then our team would essentially just like uh, go onto Google Maps, build that entire list, drive for storage virtually for you, right? And that's another thing is you can do this like virtually or you can do this in like, you know, in real life. What's the opposite of virtual? Real life, I guess. Right. I like real life drive, you know, because I live in an RV and like I'm like driving is not a big deal for me, but some people are just like, I don't have time to be out there driving and stuff. Right. So then you can drive for storage virtually by just looking on Google Maps and seeing how you can find you can see facilities that you can find that are listed on Google Maps and then also some that are not listed on Google Maps. Another thing that I do besides using Google Maps is I do Land Glide. Now there's another app, it's called Parceled, that's free. 
but land glide is better it's not free it's ten dollars a month okay and we use both like our virtual assistants will use parcel because it's free and i don't want to pay for you know, and them to have the app but then like chris my acquisitions manager he will use land glide right and you know and he'll get in and use and you can actually compare both of them to see which one you like but with land glide you get way more information than parceled just so everybody knows land glide or parceled these are apps that are on your phone. I'm not sure if they, I know Landslide has a de desktop version, but it's really not very good. But the, the app, the app is on the phone is, is awesome. I can't live without it. In fact, I use, I use Landslide every day. Every day I use Landslide. And so, um, cause I do a lot of driving and while we're driving, we're just looking for storage facilities and stuff, you know, so. And uh, anyways, so these are really for me, my top picks. All right, my top picks for finding storage. Now, obviously you could go to Craigsy, LoopNet, go online, this kind of stuff. But the truth is, is like, you really wanna to talk to the owner directly. Because when you talk to the owner directly, you get the best deal. Because then you get to be able, you build this relationship and this bond and you, you get to connect and communicate and stuff like this. So uh, for me personally, going, not going through a broker. Now, if you were gonna buy like a 50, you know, let's say, 40, 50, 60,000 square foot facility. If you want a super big facility, then maybe going through a broker is the best is the best way to go. I'm telling you, we come across we come across owners that have 50,000 square feet of facility you know, facility they want to sell all the time. You know, so even talking to owners directly like this and a lot of things. And the reason that I, we do it this way is because most of the time, the owners that we're talking to, like when you talk to them, they have not thought about selling at all. They have not thought about selling at all like essentially that's what we hear on the phone all the time is like oh i never really thought about it it's like would you be interested in selling it's like oh, i don't know if i'm really interested in selling or not it's like what would you be interested in us just giving you an offer right we would love to just give you an offer that's it and so that is what we do i mean we're giving offers and offers our goal is minimum five offers a week up you know or more we're giving at least five offers a week, if not more. All right. And so the truth is, if you are not making offers, then you are never going to find the facility to buy. Okay. So my, my question to you is, if you want to find a facility, how many offers have you made this week? Has any, any, anybody here listening to me made, made any offers this week? Actually, this week is Monday. Has anybody made any offers last week? You know, if you really want to buy a facility, then your job is to make offers, okay? Now, if you don't want to make an offer, if you don't want to drive for storage, if you don't want to get on Google Maps and call or buy a list, I didn't put buy a list. You could buy a list if you want. You could buy a list of storage facilities. You know, uh, if you want to, uh, if you, you know, you could buy a list and then call all those people yourself. All right, let's do cold call. So we're driving for storage, virtually driving for storage, and we're creating the lists ourselves internally, and then we're cold calling those lists. You could buy the list. The list is very expensive. It's not a cheap list, all right? I'm guessing a dollar a name, and typically you need to be at like a thousand names in order to buy the list, you know, I mean, in order to get it. So just so you know, it's a, it's a, it's a little bit of money. And I'm, in my mind, I'm thinking like, you know, I'm paying like a virtual assistant $7 an hour, uh, you know, that's like, you know, that's, you know, 40 hours a week, $250, maybe $300 a week. I mean, for a list for a thousand people, I could have a virtual assistant working for me 40 hours a week full time. It's like, why would I just buy one list and still have to find somebody to co-call all of them and pay them for that? So why not just have, and our virtual assistants essentially are like, their goal, their, their, their job is to call 25 people um, a day, all right? 25 people, or 25 owners a day. So it's 125 um, calls a week, you know, and or more, you know, because, uh, you know, or more, but essentially 25 is a day is what it is. And we've really learned this by just creating this acquisitions company and really starting to look at the numbers and look how everything's working out, really talking to the VAs and working with them. So we're, we know that they're calling around 25 people a day. That's taking half of the day up. They're not calling all day long because who wants to do that? Nobody wants to do that, right? So the other half of the day, they're building lists. 
right? So they're building the list, virtually looking, calling, and then they're also following up on all the calls too, as well too. So essentially what's happening for this like acquisitions team that we're building internally is that now we have like all these deals, all these calls, all these deals, all the wheels are turning on trying to manage all these different deals at the same time. And it's quite a logistical feat to be able to manage all that at once because one deal, to manage one deal is a lot of work, right? So think about having a lot of deals at the same time too. So, but anyways, it's really exciting. I love it, I love building it. And, um, and this is something that y'all can do too. It's not difficult. It's just a lot of management and helping everybody get set up, right? And then teaching them how to do this stuff. All right, so just give you some insight. I'm really excited May 1st, you know, anybody that joins Storage Nerds and becomes a lifetime member will be able to hire our team and then utilize our team as well too. And they'll do all this work for you. They'll do all this work for you or you can do it yourself. And this is how you do it right here, okay? Okay, so now we got all, we got lots of different ways for you to find facilities, all right? Lots of different ways. But, um, and then also my boot camp is coming up on, in May, like I think at the end of May, I can't remember what dates they are, but um, I think maybe Ariel, Ariel and can put that into the chat for us, but also like the doors are going to open the first two weeks of May. And I think the like, right, the weekend before Memorial weekend is when my, my boot camp and those two days, essentially it's find them, fund them. So what I'm talking about right now, we are going to be de uh, digging uh super super deep into this and i have like we have 20 different ways for you to find uh, storage facilities all the different ways to fund them creative deal structuring and things like that that's what we're going to talk about in the boot camp so i'm giving you like a high level overview right now but if you are interested now only students can come to the boot camp all right that's it um, but um just so you know we will be talking about that okay so funding them okay so in this section right here i just want to talk quickly about all the different ways you can invest in self-storage and then and then all the different ways that you can fund your deals okay so um, i've already i've talked a little bit about um some types of deals but the one that i focus on is mismanaged mismanaged properties okay and these are properties that uh you know like they ain't, the owners are not managing them properly and uh and they are out there i'm telling you this is not difficult to find these now what's difficult about mismanaged facilities there's two things that are really difficult about buying a mismanaged facility number one is they're very hard to fund very hard to fund because because banks don't want to fund these and i have uh, i have a facility uh, up in the north georgia mountains it's actually like commercial property where um the owner like this is the thing too is that owners for mismanaged facilities um they don't have any documentation or they are not documenting what they're doing correctly so the owner for this particular facility that we're looking at he told me he was making $90,000 a year, right? And then we got his tax return and guess what? His tax return says $54,000 a year, okay? So $54,000 a year is worth $600,000 maybe, maybe 600, you know? And, and 90,000 is worth like a million dollars or more, right? And I put it under contract for a million dollars. It was an income, when I put it under con a, con a contract, it was an income producing property, okay? I put it for a million dollars. Well, guess what? I talked to like 10 banks. I was like, income producing property, great. I can go to a bank and get a loan, right? Income producing properties, banks, any regional, local banks or SBA, they love them love them everybody loves storage facilities everybody loves to lend on storage all right banks and then you could do regional local or sba okay and so i talked to like every local bank in the area i talked to a ridiculous amount and they just all said due to the fact that like once we started to get the tax returns in they said that due to the fact that he's only making fifty four thousand dollars a year and he told you ninety thousand and his tax returns only show fifty thousand we can only like we are only going to you know fund you know a value of six hundred thousand dollars because that's what it's valued at all right if you can prove to me that you're making 90,000 and you know, then we'll fund it. 
you know? So obviously it, I thought it was an income producing property and it became a mismanaged facility is really what it is. And mismanaged facilities, banks, they want nothing to do with them, right? And now if it was, if it was like a mismanaged facility that like was on the up and up and you could prove it was on the up and up and like it was increasing over the last couple of years had been getting better and better and better and it was at 50 percent full and now it's at 75 percent full but it's not truly like full full you know maybe sba maybe sba would lend because there is a great great a gray area with sba which is like this like 50% to 75%. And I've seen this with my students that, that they are open to looking at these types of deals to see if, it's, if it really is being managed, has been become managed prop more or better, more, is it better managed properly? No, it's a vampire blood, man, it's getting to me. I can't drink so, so much vampire blood. And it doesn't even have any alcohol in it. Okay, no, if it was not managed properly, then, but it was showing that it was becoming more like better managed, then they might be okay with lending on that. But most likely in those scenarios, you would have to probably, you have to put more down. So I did talk for this facility, I did talk, I ended up talking to hard money lenders. And the hard money lenders are like essentially asset uh, lending companies. They look at the asset as, as a whole, but they will only, they, you, they are asking for very high down payments. I mean, they're asking like 30 to 40%. And I talked to a couple of hard money lenders and I was like, yeah, you got to put 40% down. And I was like, 40%. Are you kidding me? Like I could go out and you know, that was like, you know, 400 grand, you know, it's like I could go out for a million dollars and find a real income producing property where I only had to put 20% down and buy two of those. Why would I give you 400 grand? So for me per personally, I'm not going to put 40% down on a deal and then have the interest rates like super high because hard money lenders interest rates. He said I could do 40% down at 10% interest. And I was just like, no, I'm not going to do that. I just, I don't think it's worth it that much. Because then what happens is that interest rate like makes your mortgage so much higher, right? And you have to, you know, they have to pay that every single month. And I just, I don't feel like being stressed out. So the thing is, is that um, the, uh, the stressful part of buying a mismanaged facility is not only finding the money. When you find the money, that's the easy part. And then the second stressful thing about mismanaged facilities is um, that it's, I mean, they're like a lot of work, right? You know, to, cause you'll buy them at a, typically at a discounted rate, and then you'll double, triple, quadruple the value of that property within like a couple of years. Okay. And that's why I love them. That's why I really love mismanaged facilities. Cause like the value add is just so high, but the truth is, is that it's a lot of work because a mismanaged facility doesn't really have a lot of work in terms of like rehabbing or anything like that. But in terms of like, maybe cleaning the property up a little bit if it needs, you know, like, you know, if there's trash everywhere or something like this, or maybe there's some like cars that are left over and you have to get rid of them or something like that. But the truth is, is really like getting the old, like the bad tenants out and the good tenants in and really managing that property properly. And it just really is, it's work. It takes work to do that. It takes more work to, to handle a mismanaged facility and particularly facilities that are a hundred units, you know, you know, 50 to, you know, to 200 units, but well, they will take more, more work than if you did buy a 50,000 income producing property, right? You know, so um, just keep that in mind. It's just really keep that in mind. Now, mismanaged facilities, and that, and honestly, the mismanaged facilities, because I come across, we come across a lot of facilities that are like, you know, like we have one right now, it's like 25% full, and it's 220 units that we're going to, we're trying to buy, and, um, and he, he wants a million dollars for us, 220. It's worth, going to be worth like at least two and a half to $3 million when we're done. But like to get it from 25% full to 90% full, it's going to take a lot of work. 
to manage that, right? And um, so that's why, and like we come across these properties all the time. That's why I really, I started the fund. I mean, Self Storage Fund of America is to buy these million to $3 million properties that um, are mismanaged facilities. Now, another thing with mismanaged facilities that I wanted to go over was that um, uh, I've been seeing a lot, and I talked about this, it wasn't in the last session, but the session before I talked about this, our team, our acquisitions team is noticing that um, there are, there's a certain type of deal out there, which you guys have to keep your eyes and your ears open to. And it's considered a mismanaged facility, but it's producing income. These types of facilities are um, facilities that are making money but they haven't raised their rates in years, all right? So we have one right now that we have under contract. It's making $150,000, but he hasn't raised his rates in three years. So he's at 73, 73 cents a square foot, and he should be at $1.20 a square foot, okay? So, so it's, an, it's really an income-producing property, and we could probably go to the bank and get a loan for that. All right, because it is making 150 grand. It should be once we increase the rates to a dollar twenty, it's going to be worth well over three million dollars. So we are literally doubling the, the value of that property because we have that property under contract for 1.7 million dollars. And we're going to double the value of that property pretty much just by raising the rates, which is awesome. And so keep your eyes open for that. A mismanaged property is also considered. Um, it could also be considered income producing, but you have to be able to raise the rates, okay? Now, mismanaged facilities, also you need to learn how to raise money. Now, in all cases, in all of these types of facilities, you need to learn how to raise money, okay? That's it. Commercial real estate is expensive. And if you don't learn how to raise money, then you'll only be able to buy one or two properties, right? So the truth is you have to raise money. Now, the good thing I was gonna tell you guys is, um, we are doing a virtual summit uh, on May 7th. REI USA is hosting this summit. So if you need help raising money, please make sure that you check out, um, it's, it's how to raise $100,000 in 100 days. And, uh, but really it's just, it's, it's raising capital. It's, it's how to raise capital, virtual summit. So you can go to, and actually uh, Ariel, and you could put this uh, into the, into the uh, chat. It's rei-usa.com slash raising dash capital. Okay, that's it. rei-usa.com slash raising dash capital. I should just put that here. rei-usa.com slash raising capital, raising capital. So this is a this is a virtual summit for REI USA members, okay? But um, but anybody can come. You just have to join. It's forty dollars to join, is what it is, and um, and then you can come to the summit. And then all of the coaches from REI USA will be teaching how they raise money, and they use the money. And then I think Yukiko's te Yukiko's here. She's teaching. And she's gonna she's gonna talk about how she raised all this money to buy all these multifamily that she does. I'm gonna be talking about how I raise money to buy all you know storage facilities and there's land and there's like Airbnb and all kinds of. But essentially, it's just like all these expert investors across the country talking about how they raise money. What do they do to raise money? So I highly highly recommend if you can come to that. It's a one day event from ten to five. It's just that's it. Each teacher is gonna do 30, 30 minute sessions, and then it's just gonna be like bam 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 one after another. This is really good. I'm really excited about it. Okay, so this is private money. Mismanaged facilities is private lenders, right? You, if you have private money, which is learning to raise capital, then you can buy lots and lots of mismanaged facilities and triple the value in the next couple of years and make bookus of money. This is exactly what I do. Okay. The other ways that we that you can um, invest in self storage is you can wholesale. And I just want you to know, like, there's whole, a lot of sessions on how to wholesale self-storage. If you don't have any money right now, you're like, I really want to get into storage, but I have no money at all. Learn to wholesale self-storage. I teach this. on. There's lots of sessions on, uh, you know, YouTube and stuff on how to wholesale. And I also teach this and help students in um, the coaching program as well. 
and um and then also and you don't need any money to wholesale you just need to learn how to wholesale self-storage okay and then also you can um you can do conversions which i think you're, you'll you'll see more and more of these conversions which is where you have to like build like you buy a building and then you convert it in like with portables and stuff like this and you and i don't know if anybody's interested in doing like conversions but this is getting bigger and bigger essentially all these retail spaces that are coming up for sale people are buying them up and converting them into storage facilities, all right? So you just have to have money to buy the building, which is typically a lot of money, right? And then you have to be able to convert, which is also a lot of money. So essentially conversions cost a lot of money. Now, a lot of times with conversions, you'll go, you'll, you could do this with SBA. SBA loves new construction and convert, you know, new construction is another way, but any type of bank loan or SBA bank, SBA, or syndication, you can do a lot. You can do, if you are like a syndication type of person, then you can do that, syndicate. And then finally, the last way to, uh, the last way to get into self-storage is to lend. If, you, if you're the type of person like has no money and you're like, I mean, sorry, sorry, no time, but a lot, you should just lend it out, honestly. And then you can lend it to somebody that's buying a mismanaged facility. You could be the lender and get like, you know, a, get a lien on the property. Like I have some lenders that essentially, I'm going to talk about this in, in the summit as well too, but I have some lenders that are like, no, I want to have a lien on the property. I want to make sure that if something happens, I get that property. And then I have some lenders like, no, I want a partner. Like I just want a partner. Let's do this together, man. Let's do partners. Yeah. And then like, and then I have some that are just like, let me just put some money in this fund. It's like completely passive. You take care of it. I do everything and I make the money. All right, something like that. And that's lending. So in my lending program, I have three different types of like lending programs. I have get a, get a, a lien on the property and do debt. So actually it's debt, partnering or the fund. All right, that's what I have. And so this is something that you're gonna to have to think about as well too. If you truly wanna get into, into commercial real estate, you're gonna to have to do this. You're gonna to have to learn how to do all this, okay? Okay, finally is run them. And I talked about the website already. I, I talked about the software and the website. There's a lot of property management softwares out there. We personally use StoreEdge is what we use. But there's all kinds like uh, there's um, ESS. The new one that just came out is Breeze. I just did a demo um, with them too, and it seems pretty good. Yeah, I mean, they don't have a website actually and that they only do the property management software, which I thought was kind of cool. And they're gonna come and do a demo to like our like to our storage nerd students um, next month, which, which will be really good. So for all the students that are here, you can hear them out and see what they do. Um, it's kind of a different looking software, but it's very like very modern and stuff, but it just came out and they're trying to really push it and stuff. And I think it's really, it fits very well into especially smaller facilities, but it is expensive. Like these are not cheap, all right? And there's SiteLink. Cycling is kind of the one that's been around forever. It's kind of older and like they're, it's not really being like funneled a lot, but a lot of really super uh, big facilities are, are using this as well. Um, okay, good. Run them. Yeah. So the software, what I'm saying is that your software is like the most important part of your business because it runs your entire back office. And the truth is, is that most people pay for a software every single month, but they don't utilize everything that that software has to offer. Why pay for a software that has all the bells and whistles if you're only going to be putting tenants in? Right. So like, you know, we the reason that we chose storage and I like storage so much is because you can automate everything, everything inside of storage. You can automate your auction. Our auctions are completely virtual because of storage. Oh, and then also um, storage now offers mailing, mailing. So we are, we just signed up for this. So I'm really excited. And we're going to go, we're going to, once Pete perfects this, we will go over this in the mastermind. So all the students can see this, but essentially we signed up for the mail house that storage. No, there's no other uh, software that owns that does this, but storage now just implemented this mail house where they'll mail out any type of letter that you want. 
right? So for instance, your owner transfer letters, right? When you buy the facility and you want to send out letters uh, to the new to the new tenants, they will mail all these for you. They also mail increase the rate increase letters. They mail these out for you as well too. So we we signed up and we're starting to utilize, and they do a lot of other like they do a lot of other stuff as well too. But we're starting to use all of the mail house stuff too. And we're the type of person like the reason that Store Edge comes out with all this stuff is because they they really question their members what can we do to make this software better for you? And then this is all the stuff that they come up with. Like we need to automate auction process. We need to automate, automate the letters. We need to automate like our rate increases, right? So they have stuff like dynamic pricing. There's no software that does dynamic pricing and there's no like, except for storage. I've asked all of them and there's no software that, does, but they're all softwares will do revenue management, but they will not do dynamic pricing. Revenue management, dynamic pricing, auctions, mail house. Yeah. So like literally all the things that you're manually going in and doing right? You really want to be able to automate this and like, just take it off your place. You don't have to think about it. Okay. And, uh, and so you want to find a software that does this. I mean, I think the software is like the most important part of everything that you do. So spend some time really doing demos of every single software out there and then asking them questions like, how do you do the revenue management? How do you do dynamic pricing? How do you do auctions? How do you do the mail house? You know, what do you do to make everything easier? Do you ask your members on a regular basis what they're looking for so that you can update it? The one thing that I did like about Breeze too, actually the one thing that, one thing with Breeze is that they do accounting is inside of Breeze. So you can't hook to quick QuickBooks, right? They have their own accounting system. So it's like right embedded, like you do your accounting plus software. It's really accounting plus software is really what it is. So like, that's why I said, play around and talk to every single, uh, talk to every single software and really learn them and then choose the right, you know, choose the one that best fits what you're looking for. Okay, good. I think that's a good, like find them, fund them, run them, at least for now. I'm going to just get out and um, and uh, I see there was a couple of questions. So I'll answer those. And again, all the links, stacyrosetti.com is where everything is. So just check me out and then you can, you can check out REI USA. You can find there the course you can find there, storage nerds, the fund. Just go to all the whole website and just check me out. Okay, Google me and uh, you can find everything that way as well too. Okay, I see some questions here. So what area, to figure out what area is good to invest in, do you use a third party uh, software, third party or software? Okay, yeah, we use like, essentially, quickly and honestly, the truth is, is most areas are going to be good to invest in, except for areas that have declining populations. Okay, so you want to be able to look to see if there's a, de a declining population. How do we do this? We use what Radius Plus. But the truth is, is that Radius Plus is not perfect. In fact, right now, they are having issues with their 2021 and 2020 data. And so you have to fall back to 2019. They just emailed all of us out and just let us know, like, just so you know, Radius Plus, we're having some issues right now with, with all the data, the demographics and stuff like this. So we're trying to fix it, but it could take a little while, right? But you want to make sure that wherever you're looking, that it's like 2020 data or more. And you can upgrade in Radius Plus to get even higher data if you want to do that. But the truth is, is that you want to be in, you don't want to be really being de declining uh, markets. You can't look at 2019 and see a declining market and then be like, oh, I can't invest in that. Because the truth is, is that I keep saying the truth is, but the truth is, is that like towns are growing, small areas are growing and, and people are, people are actually moving everywhere. And demographics is like totally skewed right now. It's totally skewed. So you want to be looking at the most up-to-date data that you can possibly find. All right. Going into Google and searching population of like Jamestown and it's saying it pulls up 2019 because Google only has 2019, doesn't have 2020 data. So you want to make sure that you find the, the, the best data and make sure you're not in a declining market and make sure that it's in a growing or stabilized market. 
Uh, and, you know, small towns, like, because I have, like, one of our acquisitions managers is in Alabama. And, of course, Alabama, there's some small towns that, you know, they either stable or, like, declining. And in Georgia as well, too, Miss, I'm sure Arkansas, Mississippi, all around. So what areas are growing that you can afford in? All right. That's the question. That's what you have to find out. And do, do you help people invest in a source with, yes, retirement funds or lend retirement? To, yes, exactly. Yes. So you can, uh, if you have money, highly, highly recommend that you set an appointment up with me. Uh, just go to the, um, the private lender tab or the lender or the investor tab on stacyrosetti.com. Hop on the fund uh, me, uh, session for next Monday. Or just set up an appointment and I'll chat with you, you know, or email questions at stacyrosetti.com and then I can, we can figure out, you know, how to do that as well too. But yes, definitely with retirement funds. I have one guy that, one of my investors I've been working with for 10 years, he has, and actually it was my neighbor and he was just on my, he was at the birthday party because we, we befriended each other. We've been, working, we've been working together for 10 years, but he started a checkbook uh, IRA. And he lends from that. And he's made in the last 10 years for me, almost a million dollars. Just from me building his dream house. He just bought a house. He's building his dream house right now. He just, well, he's just paid, he just paid it. Now they're going to start building it or whatever. So um, you could totally make money on your retirement account. And it's tax free, right? Okay. Uh, let me see another one. Okay. Uh, you must be an accredited investor to invest in my fund. All right. It is a 506 C reg D fund. If you are not, if you have money, but you are not an accredited investor, you can become verified. If you want, just use uh, verifyinvestor.com or talk to me anyways, because if you can't get accredited for any reason at all, we can still find another way to work together. Okay, good. Um, and then do you work with international investors? Yes, I work with international investors. Like I just at the beginning of the session, I said I was just talking to somebody that was in France, Canada, we have a couple of people from Canada. And, uh, and then also students, if you're in if you want to be a student, we have students that are international as well too. one student from Jamaica. Uh, he's American, but he's living in he's living in Jamaica and he's been he has bought three storage facilities in the last year from Jamaica from Jamaica. So uh, you could totally be virtual. I didn't put that on the thing, but like what I'm pointing out with the software is that you wanna be virtual. I live in an RV and travel full time and we manage 11 storage facilities from our RV because we have utilized the software. We utilize the software that we have and make everything completely virtual. And it's really, honestly, I think about this all the time, but like my lifestyle is really just a choice. It's a choice. I mean, anybody could really do that. You could choose to become virtual if you want to and travel and do whatever you want. And, you know, it's just a choice and, and, and choosing to manage your storage facility virtually is a choice. And it's just kind of a, it's a new concept. So a lot of people really have a hard time struggling with it but the truth is is that it's a virtual world now you might as well just grab it by its horns and then just like take it for a ride okay uh, not all retirement accounts are tax-free you're right i'm talking about i was talking about i'm sorry about self-directed retirement accounts and i was talking about like 401ks and your stuff like this you're right any other final questions i think we got it all i hope that uh, i hope that i helped you guys at least get an overall picture i appreciate you hanging in to the end and I'm here every Monday to teach, right? This is free. And then also the pitch is usually every Monday, except for today is Lillian's birthday. Uh, when, do you when you do virtual, how do you do clean out? We have a boots on the ground person. We have boots on the ground people that do all of that. All right. And I hear like Pete on the phone talking to his name's DJ. And also another thing that we're implementing into our company is Microsoft Teams. All right, so I was like, how do you manage all your, your boots on the ground and all people managing? And our acquisitions team and our property management key team are basically, they're being uh, Microsoft Teams is what we're utilizing to manage everything. All right, so that's the software. And I will start, to, we will eventually start teaching that as well in the mastermind. Okay, Azim, but it just you gotta give us some time to like figure it all out and stuff. Okay, but we will be showing everybody how we manage all that too as well.
why not just hire a management company to run the facilities, buy the property, and then just collect the check? Yeah, because then you have to pay the management company. And they, and honestly, the truth is, is like, there's not a lot of like really good management companies that will manage smaller facilities. Now, the bigger ones, like the 50, 40, 50, 60,000 square feet facilities, like all these cube smarts and public storages and extra space storage and stuff, they all are. They all, that's a third party management company, all right? So when you get these bigger facilities, then you can afford that. But the truth is, is like, I hear a lot of stuff from like owners. Like we have a, like a coach, his name's Scott Crone and he's come and talked to the group many times, but he actually hired a third party management company to manage his conversion. He bought a facility, he bought a, a warehouse in downtown uh, like Louisville, Kentucky. He converted it into a storage facility by just dropping portables in it. And then he hired a, a third party management company, CubeSmart to come in and manage it and he said that he after like six months or so he had to fire them because it was just getting to be too expensive number one and number two like you know they just weren't properly managing the thing you know so you know that's another thing when you get too big it's just hard to like you know to manage stuff so so we are vertically integrated but our property management company is actually like we actually hire our property management company to manage our facilities and out so it is a it's a company outside of miss lillian's and then on top of that that company that we use our property management company will also be managing the fund and then hopefully eventually we'll be able to offer property management services to our students as well too that's a goal so we are now first offering the acquisition, our acquisitions team, that's the first step. And the goal is eventually to offer our property management company to our, um, our students as well too. And then we'll just have like a turnkey solution for our students. Um, what do you recommend for new, for a site design? That would be layout of units. Talk to a, the best thing to do for new site construction is to talk to a metal fabrication company. And the metal fabrication company they will design, they will do an outline for you for free on what they feel like they could put into your area. So talk to one or two or three of them, all right? We have a couple of people uh, from um, that come into the mastermind and talk about this uh, from, you know, from our letter friends of mine, but essentially find a metal company like a storage facility metal fabrication company that can just lay everything out for you okay like there's tracta and janice and all the big names but the truth is is you should really look at like local companies as well too and compare to see how much the difference would be what does new construction cost per square feet it's kind of it's like 40 dollars a square foot right now man like two years ago it was like 20 dollars a square foot but now it's like 40 dollars. so it's 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 expensive, okay? So just make sure that your prices can compensate the price that you're gonna pay for that. And also it's like a six, it's like almost a six month waiting time. Unless the company has bought a lot of steel and are, is holding that steel, all right? But a lot of times it's like almost a six month waiting time. So just so you know. All right, I appreciate it. Thank you, I'm gonna spend some time with my daughter. All right, take care and I'll see you next week. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Storage Nerds. Hope this informative conversation inspired you to go out there and jump into this highly profitable business venture that people rarely talk about. Get more tips on storage space investing at www.staceyrosetti.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and leave a rating. Together, let's build that thriving passive income one storage space at a time. Until next time.